A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the 10th Global Festival of Journalism NOIDA 2022. Moving ahead, I would now request Ms. Seher Zaman to kindly say a few words. Thank you, uh, Sneha Ji. Is, is my audio clear, please? Yeah. Yes, yes, it's clear. All right. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, especially to uh, Mr. Sandeep Marwaji for uh, giving me this chance. Once again, I was here on this platform last year as well, uh, talking about a very uh, pertinent issue, which is uh, once again pertaining to digital media, but it's also safety on digital media and how to tackle trolls. Uh, today and this year, a year after, uh, is an uh, equally, equally important issue that uh, all of us have been discussing here as far as digital literacy is concerned uh, uh, in this age of uh, when we're really surrounded by misinformation. Now, this is a very crucial today because uh, while we are, all of us, in uh, each of our uh, individual way, uh, we are either news gatherers, we are professional journalists, but uh, also equally crucial issue here for news consumers because uh, uh, news consumption has increased so much. So it's as important for a news consumer to be aware of this on how to uh, make themselves digitally lit literate and aware with respect to the information that they're consuming and, and, and moving ahead, it becomes each of our individual duty. It's not just about uh, a group of people or a set of professionals. Uh, uh, up individual level pay, each of us as a citizen, as a news consumer, or even as creator of news here, uh, that we move ahead together to clean up the system. And the reason why I'm saying clean up is because uh, we'll be dealing with fake news on, on a daily basis. And uh, uh, the role of journalism is uh, to, to always be true to the news, true to the facts, and uh, take the role of verification of information uh, far more seriously. I mean, we do a lot of vetting. There's a lot of vetting in the process here, but uh, a lot of time information is sent out to just make verification. Verification time bhi hota hai. So uh, fake news and misinformation is, is the biggest devil of our times today, to, to, to put it across uh, 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 very bluntly that this is uh, today's uh, devil that each one of us are dealing with. Uh, misinformation, uh, as has been mentioned by our previous speakers today as well, is, is of various types here. Uh, there is information that is misquoted. A uh, politician or celebrity ka jo sound bite hota hai, uh, agar wo ek issue pe unhone quote diya hai, wo ek dusre issue ke liye istamal kar liya jata hai, which is unrelated. So there is a uh, misquoting that takes place as well. Information that is manipulated with the intent of creating strife and of, uh, of creating uh, violence or unrest in society. Uh, for, for instance, if there is uh, an incident of violence that is taking place in Bangladesh, that is used, the images of that are used as an incident that has taken place in India. And, and, and that is how tempers flare. And that is a huge uh, irresponsible criminal act here. I think uh, uh, spreading misinformation uh, should come under uh, an act of crime, uh, just like uh, Tackling trolls should also come under as an act of crime and as an act of assault and abuse on people here. Uh, there's also a very uh, difficult uh, aspect of fake information here, which is when uh, faces, faces of well-known people are used to say something else. Now, this started as an art project many years ago, uh, where deep fake, they are known as deep fake, that... Uh, President Obama or Tom Cruise, their image, the image of their face is used to say something that they never said in life. This was a quote that they never gave in life. And yet the technology is so sophisticated. Deep fake was only restricted to be used by the founder of the software. But now there's so many such softwares that are available on our mobile phone where you just download it, put your face on something, put someone else's face on something. And, uh, use it for uh, saying something that the person has never used. So that becomes a very, very difficult uh, crime to tackle. I would still say it's a crime. Uh, so let's also define while we're trying to understand these various layers and these various forms of misinformation that continues to hit us, 
Let's also uh, take into account where all this mis misinformation is being sent out. Uh, one is, of course, WhatsApp groups. Uh, we are all well versed with it. We have uh, various WhatsApp groups that we are a part of. Uh, uh, this is for everyday life as well. Uh, we are part of our WhatsApp group for our uh, residential societies, for our neighborhood groups. We are part of WhatsApp groups uh, in, in office space, in school alumni. And us pe bahut sari information jo WhatsApp, WhatsApp pe share hoti hai. More often than not, I don't want to use the word mostly, but more often than not, it is fake. To the extent ke ab iska ek pet name ho gaya hai, ke ye aapko ek information aapko WhatsApp University se mili hai, which, which means to say that this is fake news, this is wrong information. Uh, there is also a, a string of information that comes on our social media feed, uh, which is Twitter, which is uh, Facebook, uh, which is YouTube as well. So we have to be very wary of where we are consuming information from. And very unfortunately, I mean, I, I, I belong to uh, the television news industry and in the business of news here now for the past 20 years. But unfortunately, hum abhi is pe hai, that there are certain news channels as well, uh, which are playing a role in spreading misinformation. And uh, this has happened because the, the lines of consumption of news has blurred so much. It's it's become part of a, a technology industry. I mean, you're not just getting your news from legacy media houses, legacy media channels and platforms. You're consuming news from uh, tech industry, which is part of your social media. So the lines have blurred so much that in this race, in this rush, that your information goes viral. Ten years ago, in the industry, there was a trend that breaking news. Every thing was breaking news. Bana diya jata tha. And in that rush to go viral, ke aapka handle, aapka hashtag, sabse zyada trend kare, us rush mein unfortunately bahut zyada misinformation or fake news bhi de jati hai. Lots of sensationalism that happens here as well. Uh, I'm uh, going to give an example here. Currently, I'm uh, part of uh, the BRICS, uh, BRICS countries media forum where there are about 25 uh, chosen journalists from across the BRICS countries. And all of us together are, are brainstorming on this very issue in dealing with uh, the infodemic, the infodemic which was mentioned by one of our panelists earlier as well, Mr. Pandey, on uh, how the uh, information pandemic is now called infodemic and that has become a huge uh, issue to tackle. So uh, one of my uh, Chinese counterparts, Chinese journalists happened to mention that okay, in, in their country, of course, they have a very different style of media, something very different from what exists here in India. But they had done a research where in which it was a shocking um, uh, quote to hear that um, in China, as far as senior citizens are concerned, 79% of senior citizens consume information on TikTok. And, uh, and they, they consume it thinking that they're consuming news. Uh, TikTok is a platform, hai. it's not even like Twitter. Twitter has a lot of news, hai. Facebook has a lot of legacy media houses. Hai. But TikTok is like a, like a joke, like a parody platform where people just do things for fun. And to, to think that TikTok has news consumption, ho raha hai, I mean, that's another level of chaos. It was a very, very shocking figure uh, that I had heard. And... Um, Therefore, the emphasis here today is that it becomes every person's individual duty here to, to be actively uh, uh, participating and make this our habit of verifying news. I know for the layman, this seems like a very tall order. I mean, this is like double the work. Ek taraf to aap news consume kar rahe, but dusri taraf aapko ye bhi sochna hai ki ye kahan se news aari hai, chalo iska verification bhi kar rahe. But uh, it's, uh, it, it becomes part of our responsibility at least to ascertain that the news that we are consuming is not fake, is not uh, misinformation, uh, and is not sinister. Uh, the, the purpose of it is not sinister. So verifying news becomes extremely important here and we have to be mindful of where we are taking our information from. Uh, professionally, as I said, as uh, other panelists have mentioned as well, that news verification is in-house. We have our own network, hota hai, reporters, ka, correspondents, ka, per news desk ki verification. Hoti hai. And a lot of stages it goes through here if your uh, intent really is sincere to put out uh, genuine news. 
Uh, apart from that, other tools that the desk uses is Google ka mention hua tha bhi. There are other softwares such as Invid, such as Mapillary that media houses very frequently use here to verify content. So right now, our uh, news industry is in a phase here where uh, the role of fake news busters becomes very important. Wo log jo, uh, news ko, fake news ko bust karte hai, jo fake news ko pakarte hai, jo news ko verify karte hai, their role has become extremely important. So uh, in fact, uh, today as I speak, I, I'm aware of certain journalism schools here who are also providing special uh, courses and workshops uh, where uh, they are taught the skill of verifying news, they're taught the skill uh, and they're, they're, they're taught how to use softwares where you can bust fake news. So apart from just teaching uh, traditional journalism and reportage, there are also a separate section where students are taught in these workshops here on how to catch fake news because uh, uh, ek newsroom mein ab ek section bhi banta ja raha hai. there are certain news channels here uh, where they have a section bhi banaya hai. Uh, ki in house uh, verification of news. Hota hai. And they, it's a very active department here where they put out information that this image was shared with this news. Ke liye, so this was fake. Please be aware this was fake news. So that uh, uh, gives me a lot of hope here ke as far as uh, verification of news is concerned and the real intent of journalism uh, that serves its people here. Uh, it's uh, it's important because now the journalism schools are teaching on how to tap fake news and identify fake news here. And these youngsters will then enter the industry. They will form a larger part of the newsroom and the news desk in a verification process. So a verification process, jitna active or jitna frequent ho as part of uh, an official news industry. Uh, so uh, on a very hopeful note here, I would like to uh, end my talk that uh, uh, yeah. the role of those who are busting fake news today has become equally, I would put it on equal playing field and an equal group. Equally important uh, is their role as much as the of a reporter and journalist on ground. And uh, some of these verification tools, which I now feel, uh, apart from just professionals using it, also have to become user-friendly. We have to news consumers, ko apne viewer, reader, uh, listener, in sab ko bhi is tarike ke software uh, ke baare mein bataye or provide kare uh, on right. smartphones just mein wo easily use kar sakte hai aur khud apni news jo consume kar rahe hai, wo verify bhi kar sakte hai. Wonderful. Thank Wonderful, wonderful. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for that informative session.